start from this side. I am saved. I am saved. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am successful. I am successful. I am happy. I am happy. I am healed. I am healed. I am free. I am free. I love life. I love life. I am abundant. I am abundant. I am an overcomer. I believe. I believe. Everybody say yeah. Yeah. Give yourselves a clap. You see, when you're free, it's a great thing. But not everyone's going to slap you on the back and say, well done, you're free. Yeah. They want you to conform. Jesus was like a nonconformist. This is why the religious leaders eventually killed Jesus. Because Jesus was saying to people, hey, do you know what? They're no better than you. In actual fact, if you can trust and believe God in your situation, from <coughs> your heart, God's actually your friend. Now, they did not want that to get out there. God is your friend. God wants to bless you and help you. He's with you. He'll never leave you. His mercy, His grace is all there. Not in the religion. Not religion. Religion's dead and it will do no good. Especially when it comes to prayer. You don't want all the things <coughs> and therefores and all that. Yeah? It's not how you pray using a system. So we don't use the common book of prayer, for instance. As good as it is, probably help people, probably bless them, but we're not robots. Yeah? A person like me goes to college, yeah? and I'm not one of these people fall off the conveyor belt, and I'm the same as all the other men. Either I'm right, and all the other ministers are wrong, or they're right, and I'm wrong. That's the way it is. Sorry to tell you that, guys. Okay? But that's the maverick in me. Yeah? That's, that's the freedom. That's what Jesus was trying to get across to people who were outcasts, down and out. They were, they were classed as losers. They were depressed. They were ill. You know? And, and Jesus was saying, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I am the God who healeth thee. Yeah? It's what you confess. It's the report that you give about yourself that will determine whether God's going to bless your life or whether you're going to live in doubt and fear. Don't listen to people. Do not listen to them. Yeah? All you've got to do is believe what the Bible says. Our filter as Christians is what the Word of God says. Not what the doctor says. And it'll surprise you. It might surprise you. I'm going to say something. That's a maverick in me as well. The doctors give people medicines. Give people drugs. Those drugs come from companies that have got trillions of dollars and pounds. They make millions. So if there was a remedy on the market, and it was a remedy where you can, it, it's natural products, right? And it could heal you. Just think about that for front of the side. I wasn't going to mention it. Yeah. So, so it's a natural product. Do you know they can't paint a natural product? Doctors, they can't say, well, we own it. They can only say they own something if it goes through their chemistry and they produce it, they can paint it after they do all the tests and trials. Then what they could do, just saying, what they could do is they could pay people to do trials and you know you can manipulate what you want in test results. Right? And they could say, you take this drug, a cure you. Right? And the paid doctors and professionals to do the research, this is well documented. Okay, I'm just waiting on you. So still here? Yeah. yeah. So you go to a doctor and you trust the doctor. And you trust the doctor with these chemicals, okay, that's been maybe manipulated, drugs, <coughs> and into your system. People are making millions from the government buying all these drugs. You would agree with that. The health center can't go with it all. I mean, the health care in the country can't. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're going on there with the health care, paying billions and millions for the drugs. Right? But the people who are pushing them. Now, this is relevant. Bear with me. Right? It's like in church, Fred told Bob, who told Peter, who told Paul, and now we're doing it. Yeah? 
But what filters have we put in place? Because some of the stuff we're doing isn't working in church. This is where I'm coming from. Yeah. So these drugs, maybe the results, nobody's cured as what they said you would be cured. Maybe the death rate is just the same if you had have kept off the drugs. Maybe there's other things on the market that you can take that's natural and, and okay, there's some work, you have to break down the nutrients and the vitamins and you have to produce it and, and extract the, the ingredient that's going to help you from it. That takes time, takes money. Yeah. And maybe you could get better results in your life from these natural products that's happening in life. Right? But nobody's pushing them. Do you know, I'm, I'm going to throw this, I, I wouldn't be surprised if people got murdered, right? Covertly. In this country, or in America especially, probably. If somebody comes along with something that's going to rob the drug companies of millions of pounds, of all their revenue, they make billions on certain drugs. If somebody comes along and says, my success rate is a lot more, a lot better than those drugs they're taking. How do you know, and, and there is some controversy over this, I get that, that people don't sort of buy it, put a lid on it, and even murder for the greed of money. People murder. You know, we've got to wake up and smell a coffee sometimes as Christians. and then You've got to ask questions. And that's why, this is my point, ask questions. Am I going to live longer? Is it going to heal me? You know, in the Bible, the widow, uh, not the widow, the woman with the issue of blood spent, spent all her money on doctors and on medicines, but she still bled and she was dying. Spent everything she had. But she came to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment, saying, if only I touch his hem, I will be cured. Amen. No doubt that she was going to be cured. Now, you, the doctor will only tell you what Paul, Peter, Fred, and Bob, and the books have told them, and the research has told them. He will not tell you, you are healed. He'll not tell you that. He'll not tell you to use your faith and your belief. He's not paid for that. He's paid that right then, two minutes later, you're right, prescription. Right, the chemist, he got loads of drugs now, painkillers and drugs. Okay? Now, I'm not saying... There's no value in that. I'm not saying that. Right? Because it could be. But what I'm saying is ask questions. Research stuff. See if you're missing out on something that could revolutionize your life and help you. Yeah, that would be smart, wouldn't it? Well, I, I had high blood pressure. Just to give a personal example. I don't know where I'm going with this. This is probably the maverick in me, isn't it? <laughs> Well, I went, when I first come here, I went to the doctors here, and he says, you have high blood pressure. I says, okay. He gave me uh, tablets for the high blood pressure. <coughs> okay. I researched the high blood pressure. This is just personally where I come from. The high blood pressure tablets that he gave me, when I researched, you just don't take one angle. Don't take one angle of somebody's perspective. Research it and, and see what other doctors are saying about the medicine and the tablets, which is what I've done. I ask questions now. Okay. Is it working? Has it worked for people in the past? Is it likely to work? You know, what's the teachings of this church? What's the teachings of that church? And this church that's booming over here, what's their teaching? See, ask questions. Yeah. So I ask questions and I find out that the death rate with this drug is just the same as if you hadn't taken it at all. That's what if the conclusion I came to with this certain drug. And uh, so I decided, plus, I'm going to listen to what God says in the Bible that I am healed by His stripes. And that His name is higher than cancer. His name's higher than high. You, I don't care how high your blood pressure is, Jesus is above it. Yeah? So, so either Jesus is going to bless my life, help me, and I'm not going to die, and I'm going to be well, I'm going to be fine and fit. Yeah, and I don't care who said what, I'm going to believe what the Bible says, which is my filter in life, or I'm going to believe what the doctor says. The side effects actually do more harm than good when I researched that whole thing. And there was natural products, natural things I could do that's going to bring uh, my 
blood pressure lower, which I'm trying to do now and I'm implement it. Uh, I feel great, I feel fine, I feel okay. Yeah, I feel like a kid. Amen. I feel like the first chandeliers, I could swing off them. I could do that. Oh, no, I can't. I just said uh, I can't do it. You know? Uh, my climbing Snowden proved that to me anyway. Don't be climbing Ben Nevis. Yeah. So so I feel like it and I believe in it. Yeah, and I'm fine. So so what we've got to do is ask questions. Now prayer is one of those things you need to ask questions because really everyone prays. Even unbelievers pray. But they don't get their prayers answered. Okay? Now if we go to Second Chronicles. Yeah. I'm gonna teach you not to be a spawner and monkeying around and being a donkey and all that. Yeah, I'm gonna teach you what the Bible teaches you and what a lot of Christians are missing. Now, the word if yeah, you don't have to pray. You do not have to pray if you don't want to pray. But if my people who are called by my name, so we're Christians born again. To Nicodemus, you must be born again, born of the Spirit, yes. not in the flesh, okay? Because the flesh doesn't profit, but the Spirit does. In other words, you've got the Spirit of God in your life. Think about that. Think about the Spirit of God in your life. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in your life. That power. Talk about nuclear infusion. You've got nuclear energy in your life. Now, the difference between nuclear energy and something powered by steam or a battery is the nuclear submarine doesn't need to recharge batteries until 20 years and if even got submarines now that will never never need to recharge nuclear a lot of power in that so so we've got that power in our lives the same holy spirit the power of all creation is available and that's your potential as a christian just think about that yeah. Very, very powerful to think about that in your life. Will humble themselves. Okay? So in this verse, you've got to humble yourself. We looked at this last week briefly. So that means you've got to say, do you know what? I can't do it in my strength. The doctors can't do it in their strength. That's a pity. You see, we're brainwashed. Some of us mind control. Go to the doctors, see what they say. Yeah, the Bible doesn't really say that. I don't read in the Bible, go to the doctor, and he give you medicine, and off you go. But, no, as a church of the Nazarene, we have to be careful. And we say, officially, keep on the drugs. Well, keep on your drugs. If the doctors prescribe them, keep on them. Because, you see, we're liable. If I say to you, right, you can throw your drugs away. It don't matter whether it came from a dealer. Yeah, Bob Marley. Yeah, keep you calm, right? In fact, Bob Marley is probably better for you than some of the drugs. <laughs> that's controversial, but listen, God says, I give you every herb in the field. Uh, that's where the Jamaicans come from. They say, yeah, the herb. You know, you want to chill out and get on the Bob Marley myth. Yeah, now, they've got at least some Bible basis for that. God created the herb in the field, and that's cannabis. You know? So, so, so uh, I don't know how you're going to juggle that one as a Christian, all right? But here's the thing. That's a natural product, by the way. Grow. Yeah. Moderation. Can't tell me in the Bible it's wrong to smoke cannabis or to eat it or to make a pie with it. Okay? Well, I'll have a debate with you. No problem. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay? But the doctors won't give you cannabis. But it's proven medically now that cannabis relieves pain. And cannabis can help you. How controversial is that? Yeah, but they're not legalizing it. Why not? Can't make money on it. Can't make money. Dead simple. Now that's really out of the box thinking, isn't it? Would you agree with me? Yeah. In a church? Yeah. On a Sunday? <laughs> wow, that's a big egg. Well, anyway, I, I, I have no teaching on that anymore. Anyway. That's up to use to sort it. But here's the thing. Uh, with it, when you're humble, are you humble enough to say, 
it's, 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 it's God or nothing. It's God or nothing. How humble is that? I'm either going to die or I'm going to live. I'm either going to listen to God's word and really go for it. I know people who can testify and will testify in this church. If I get my hands on them, they'll come and say they trusted God, believed in God, cut their plaster, Paris off, which is my sister. Other people will say that uh, they, they've thrown their medicine out. Thrown it out and started believing in God, doing some homework, some researching, and find out that, that God healed them. And God bless them. Some will say that. I'm hoping we'll get these testimonies in here to inspire you. So being humble is like I spoke about the widow. Right? Now here's the teaching of the widow that everyone actually misses. Right? The widow was all in. It was everything. All in. It's like the poker card player goes to Las Vegas or whatever and he gets a hand decent hand, not that, you know, sometimes the hands were dealt, I know that, in life. But he got a hand that he really believed in, and he throws everything in, everything. Yeah, cowboy film, the saddle goes in, the ranch goes in, the wife goes in, the kids go in, the food goes in, the shoes come off his boots, his boots are on the table, he's everything. Okay, now he probably loses, I don't know, right? But here's the thing with God. Do you think you're humble enough to say to God when you pray and if you pray, yeah, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So there's the evidence. The evidence is it in words. I've heard prayer meetings. Been around church a long time. And they still die, still get ill, still, you know, they don't get their prayers answered. That's all they're doing. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah? Don't get it. Right? Here's what God's saying. So you have to put action into your prayer. What is that action? Humble themselves. Just God or nothing. I'm all in. Either God, you're going to help me. I've done this in my life, actually. I've come from experience. But we'll not go there because I'm nearly done now. I tell you loads of stuff. I know this thing works. And, and for me, I'm milking the sucker. Right? I am. This works, guys. Really works. Well. When you realize that you're free, it works. And I don't care what ministers, reverend, bishop, whatever, right reverend, says to me. I know what I believe and I know what God said in my heart. And I know what works for me anyway. And, and I've got the Bible to back this up, right? Because I've been called an idiot, stupid, from ministers in the church. Okay, a, a prop, a prop wants to give up a job, and then I told the minister all excited, God told me to give up a job, yeah, I'm going to do, you know, he's going to do something amazing in my life, he says, you're a prop, you turn your neighbor and say, you're not a prop, you're not a prop, that's what you're here. you're not a prop, you know, and you're not a prop, you're not a prop, here's why he called me a prop, because I'm all in, I'm all in for God, basically, and I'm a prop. And that's come from a minister. So don't even believe ministers and pastors. Same with the religious leaders. He said, stay poison. They're putting poison into your mind. They want to control you and keep you down. That isn't freedom. Hello? It's not freedom. You get me? Yeah. Jesus is teaching yeah. freedom is <coughs> a bunch of hypocrites. And they all, do you know how hard that was in them days for a normal person like Jesus to stand and call the law of the land, the religious leaders, we've got Moses and the prophets type of people, we've been across the Red Sea, we've got miracles, Jesus give us this land, the promised land. Yeah. Have you got your swag bag? Turn to your neighbours, have you got your swag bag? <laughs> The promised land was this, a land of good things. Yes, a land of good things, anyone with me? Yes. You hear me? Yes. A land of good things, swag bag. Ahoy my hearties. Like Long John Silver up here. Yeah. Ahoy my hearties. Do you know Long John Silver had a pirate, didn't he? Do you know what a pirate can do? A pirate can only, can only say what you teach it. Ahoy my hearties. Yeah. So the pirate will repeat what you teach it. 
just like religious people. That ain't prayer. Turn to your neighbor and say, that ain't prayer. That's just, that's just waffle words. You like speaking. You know, Jesus tells stories about them standing street corners and talking to the scene of people. Not going to work. Yeah? Don't be a pirate. Don't just say what people have told you to say. That's not praying from your heart. That's not believing. Okay? I refuse to be a pirate. Yeah? That's why we don't do pirate. Well, we do do pirate. Positive pirates, all right. <laughs> you know, I better crack myself. But I won't say something I don't believe. Everything we do with the Mexican wave is Bible-based. It's powerful. And it will seeds that will change your life. Okay? Don't be a pirate. So Jesus isn't a pirate. Humble themselves, say, God, I'm all in, I'm humble now, it's all or nothing. You know, bungee jump, one, two, I'm over. Before you get the three, come back, you're not connected yet. Yeah, I'm gone, see ya. Yeah. I don't wait till five, three, two, one. Yeah, lift off. Yeah. So I'm a type of person, that's what you got to get that. Yeah. So I'm all in, all or nothing. I'll either walk on the water and float, or I'll sink. But I'm not the sort of person sitting in the boat saying, God, please don't rock the boat, the big waves are coming. I don't care. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't care. <laughs> this is important to be free. Don't be, I don't care. Yeah, Jesus, they came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, don't you care that we drown? <laughs> Seasoned fishermen. Yeah, like wimps. Yeah, want to get their trousers on. <clears throat> they want to man up. Turn to your neighbor and say, man up. <laughs> And Jesus said, uh, I, he, he taught them, I do care, but you have to live as if I don't care. And sometimes in prayer, you've got to pray in a way that sometimes you'll think God doesn't care about you. I don't care, I'm drowning. I've got cancer. I've got, I've got, I've got all sorts of cripple and back problems, head problems, eye problems, ear problem, nose, mouth, so eyes. Yeah, and we're thinking, where's God? Where's God? Where, and this is serious. Sorry for having a laugh. Okay, but where is God in it? Right? Now, I'm, I'm going to finish with something very, very powerful to every Christian. Really, extremely powerful. Okay. So you humble yourselves, that means you're all in, like the widow. Yeah, everything, all in. You have to pray and seek my face. That ain't just a prayer. That isn't just our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that isn't a prayer. When you're seeking God's face, what this means yeah, is, is that you get an experience. You feel God. Your heart moves. You've meditated. I take might take a whole week even before you utter one word to God. That's seeking his face. You've got to know that you're actually talking at the throne of grace and talking to God and he's listening. You've got to really believe. If you just say a prayer and walk away, the chances are the chances are God probably didn't hear it. I'm just going to say it. Now that's a shocker, isn't it? God never heard my prayer. You have a you have to seek his face. You have to be, be still for the presence of the Lord. you got to meditate on his word. you got to have a vision that you know God's listening. Okay? Not easy. Not easy. But if it's easy, praying all our prayers would be answered. We wouldn't be here. We'd be all, oh, praise the Lord. Who needs to come to church? You know, I'm, I'm healed. I'm set free. I'm delivered. I'm, I'm financially good, working good, family good, uh, you know, everything's just brilliant. Right? But the truth is, the people in the Bible had to enter and into the promised land. They had to conquer. They had to achieve. They had to do things. God does his bit. We do our bit. By their fruits you'll know them. This is hard because there's no time limit. It could happen like that in your life or it could take weeks. It could take months. How do you know when you've how do you know when you've seeked God's face? How do you know? I'll tell you how he knows. He talks back. Right? He talks back. He's talked to me. 
has gone. And I'll tell you how I knew he talked to me. I was really depressed, didn't care if I lived and died. Walked around a field. I'd been walking all day, and it was the worst weather you probably could think of. I was dehydrated, didn't drink. I was dehydrated. I thought my heart was jumping out of my body. Yeah, I thought it was going, I heard my heart going as I was walking. I walked all day, end of the evening, heart was going, never stopping to walk really quick. Didn't give a damn, didn't care. Right? And I said to God, you know what? I don't give a damn. I don't care. Just just let my heart stop. Just take me. I'm a waste of time. Okay? A waste of time, space. I'm no good to nobody. Nobody loves me. I'm on my own. Everything I do, damn feels. If I throw everything in, I'm walking home naked. Okay? I'm not going to win. I'm a loser. Right? That's my testimony. Okay? I said that to God, expecting what? For God to say, okay then. Heart stop. You die. We'll bury you. And that's the end of you. Yeah, but here's what God said to me. And that's how I know it was God, because it wasn't, I wasn't on that wavelength. Sometimes you've got to change the radio station in your life and then what you hear and the report you give. Here's what God said to me. And I just, I stopped. I've been walking all day and I was out of here. Really was. I stopped and God said, that's where I wanted you. I heard it. That's where I wanted you. And I stopped on my tracks. I didn't get it. I says, but I'm no good, at, I'm finished, I'm done. I'm not even bothered if that's where you want me, type of theology. Yeah? And God says, and I says, okay. And here's what I said to God. I says, I want you to restore everything to me that I feel I've lost. Restore the whole lot. And I, I added a few more, because being human. So I added a few more to my list. I says, you can be that, because I ain't messing. Right? And that very day, God answered my prayer. That very day, how amazing is that? God answered the prayer. Something for 18 months, I've been thinking like this. I've been depressed. I was on depression tablets. I went to doctors and gave me tablets and all that. Totally depressed. Done, finished, out of here, that's it. And that day, and I've been praying, I've been praying for 18 months, right? Nothing, 18 months, nothing. And, but as soon as I come to the end of myself, and I let God take control, and I, came, I didn't even know what I was doing, God heard my prayer. Amen. God heard me. Amen. I didn't want him to hear me because I was really, 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 like at the end, finally told, done. That's prayer. For me, that's prayer. Yes. Don't care if it took 18 months. Look at me now. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Somebody's Praise getting it. Lord. You get it? The widow put everything in. That when you're drowning, you'll think God doesn't care. God does care. But you'll think He doesn't. Yeah. yeah? You think God's saying, I don't care. It's those who have to say, I don't care in front of the mountain, in front of the storm, in front of the illness and the diseases. We don't care because God's still on the throne. And I believe what he says. And my filter is the Bible. That is how you know you seek God's face. And I don't do it all the time. I wish I did. I don't. I'll be honest. I don't seek God's face all the time like that. To get 18 months. Okay, but if you can do that, come to the end of yourself, let God... Let go and let God say, so turn to your neighbor and say, let go, let go, and let God, I promise you, you're in for a miracle. You are in for a miracle. Okay?